cracked out all the clues. With interesting people, there's a mystery to be solved. An adventure is unfolding, so why not get involved? Come on, read all about it. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing. <laughs> Your tapping came just in the right place, then. Glad to see it was only you and nothing more. Hey, come in, come in, young lady. Hello, Mr. Walker. Our Chris and Sam, Samantha, here yet? No, no, just myself and Anne, of course. Hello, Councillor Blake. Councillor Blake sounds so official, Lynn. I think it's about time you started calling me Anne. All right. <laughs> uh, 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 let's not stand around. Uh, please, uh, do sit down. Uh, make yourself comfortable. Uh, I've got some lemonade in the kitchen. Will that do you? That'll be great. Good, good, good. Then we can get down to business. I certainly have a lot of nice books, Mr. Walker. Oh, yes, I read them all, too. Every one. Nowadays, my eyesight's going a bit. Doctor says I shouldn't read very small print anymore. Don't know what I'd do if it went for Anne here, popping in and reading to me. It's one thing I like about your newspaper. Big print, easy to read. It's good paper, too. Nice to know what you young ones are thinking. Oh, no. Where was I? Oh, <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Have a sandwich. It's cucumber. I guess I won't be reading any more today. We were reading The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. It's very exciting, especially the opening. You know, I never thought about not being able to read everything I wanted to. Must be awful. Yes. Reading's one of those things that we always take for granted. You never told me about reading to Mr. Walker when I interviewed you. It's not part of my official duties, Lynn. I've known Mr. Walker ever since I was little. And has Mr. Walker ever talked to you about King's Manor and who lived there? Oh, so that's why you're here. Mr. Walker's been telling you about the Edwards, has he? Lynn, Mr. Walker's over 80, and his memory isn't quite it's accurate. It's true. The Edwards did live at King's Manor. The records all say it was the Edens. I checked it when Mr. Walker first told me. I know, but the records have all been changed. What? Everything's been changed. The whole history of Herbertville. Oh, that's impossible. Do you realize how difficult it would be to change history? Not for Dunedin. He has special powers. Dunedin? Our stories in the newspaper about Dunedin are all true. Dunedin is real, and he's the mayor of Herbertville. Oh, really, Lynn? You don't expect me to believe that Mr. Eden is the Dunedin of your stories? No. No one will, unless Mr. Walker can find some proof. Here you are. Lemonade. Oh, yes. Should be lots of old papers and knickknacks in here. Mr. Walker? Oh, thank you. In here? Yeah. <laughs> Could never bring myself to throw anything away. Now, oh, let's take a look. Photographs. Here, have a look. These must be really old. What's this funny looking parade? Oh, that's the Great War. 1915 it was when we joined up. You fought in the war? 
infantry. Spent three years at front, getting our feet wet in the trenches most of the time. A bit different from the Star Wars you see nowadays. Men. By the King's order, the name of Platoon Sergeant Joseph Harold Walker, 39th Bat Battalion. Battalion CEF was published in the London Gazette on 9th August 1917 as mentioned in a dispatch. Distinguished service. Distinguished service means outstanding or exceptional. Being mentioned in dispatches, that's a kind of a report. Was the Army's way of recognizing Mr. Walker's bravery. What's that one? Oh, that was given to me when I was a fireman. What did you get the award for? It was a big fire. The hospital blazed for hours. You could see the smoke for 20 miles. Go to an outpost. Oh, Mrs. Taylor was the last one out. I picked her up and I said, Mrs. Taylor, we're going for a walk. She smiled, calm as anything, and she said, I think you're just in time, young man. She was right. Just as we got out the door, the, it's a huge bang and the, the whole roof collapsed. It took all night and half the next day to put the fire out. There were times close my eyes, I can still smell the smoke, hear the sirens. But enough, I mustn't bore you young people. You don't, Mr. Walker. You're better than the history books. You should write a book. Well, I've seen a thing or two. Not that I can get Anne here to believe me about the Edwards. I'd like to, but there's just... Maybe this paper's got some in. Yeah, well, what's the date? July 1st, 1931. Much too late. The manor burned down in 1906. We need something about that date. Hey, look at these shoes on sale for $6. That's so cheap. Cheap? That was a lot of money in those days. Yeah, I could have sworn I had some books about Herbert Wells. Well, I think you're both wasting your time. Now, I really have to get... Wait! 25th anniversary of King's Manor Fire. 25 years ago, 1906. On June 28th, 1906, a fire destroyed King's Manor, the home of Mr. William Edwards. Let me see this. Mr. Edwards' grandfather was Don Edwards, one of Herbertville's earliest citizens. He built the manor in 1850. You see, I told you I knew what I was talking about. But this is impossible. All the records have been changed. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I still think it's impossible. Just a minute. This is a special edition, and the special editions are always framed and kept on display at the town hall. Let's go down there and compare them. This could be important. Bye, Mr. Walker. Goodbye. Bye. Lynn, Lynn, wait for us. What happened? Deneen tried to trap us in an old factory and... Oh, I'll tell you later. It, it's okay, Chris. Lynn explained everything to me. I don't know whether I believe it all, but we're going to go down and check it out. You're welcome to come along. Tell us what happened. How did you escape? Well, first we climbed out the window. That's when we saw Deneen and Mr. O'Regan. Sorry, I knew. We have to be really quiet when we get in. Okay. So I got over the fence all right, but Mr. O'Regan grabbed Chris before he could get all the way over. So how did you get away, Chris? When he started pulling me, he pulled me by my shoe. <laughs> <laughs> now, you think you overheard the mayor saying he forged some sort of document? Yes, we did. And he also said that he would hit it with the old records. All right. The old records are in the deed room down the hall on your left. You and Chris try to find that document. Lynn and I are going to compare newspapers. Okay. Okay. A and be quiet. We shouldn't really be in here this late. Sure. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Come on, let's see what's inside.
this place is neat. I'll bet we can find out everything that's happened here. Hey, look at this. Absconded. That sounds really important. Yeah, but what does it mean exactly? Keep on reading and maybe we can figure it out. Absconded. January 3rd, 1873. That's over a hundred years ago. Gentlemen, I beg to inform you that one Mark Clark, about 35 years of age, with black hair, black whiskers, and a high forehead with a wife... The wife has a high forehead? I don't think so. Oh, there's a comma after forehead. I should pause there. A high forehead, with a wife and one son, about five years old, departed from the town of Herbertville with property he obtained by false pretenses. What does that mean? It means he stole property which wasn't his. And then ran away. That's what absconded must mean, to run away secretly from the law. If the whereabouts of Mark Clark are known to you... I know, it's an old wanted notice. That's what it is. Yeah. If the whereabouts of Mark Clark are known to you, such information should be forwarded to the Herbertville Post Office. I am, sir, your obedient servant, William Scott. I wonder if they ever caught him. Who knows? Now, come on. We have to keep looking. Well, it would help if we knew exactly what we were looking for. See, not only is the name changed, but some of the words are on a different line. It looks so authentic. We've got it! We found it! This must be the documenting forge. It's supposed to be an agreement made in 1910 between William Eden and the town council. I can see it. I, William Eden, agreed to donate five acres of land to the town of Herbertville. This land will henceforth be called King's Park. What does henceforth mean? From that moment onwards. This park will belong to the town for 70 years. This was signed in 1910, so 70 years would make it 1980. But if Herbertville no longer owns the park, then who does? Read the rest of it. The land will then become the property of any remaining members of the Eden family. I don't understand what this means. Everybody in town knows that the mayor, Mr. Eden, is the last living member of the Eden family. So when this document becomes public, the mayor, Jordan Eden, will be the legal owner of King's Park. So that's what he wanted all the time, the park. And he changed the history of Herbertville to get it. Yes, but we still don't know why he wants the park. There's something else we don't know either. What? How to stop him. <laughs>